We're rolling. Like, okay. I like to call the order of the town of Ledger, Connecticut Town Council Community Relations Committee Informational Forum. It is Wednesday, October 7th, 2020. The time is approximately 632. At this time, I'd like to recognize the following people that are here. Uh, Councilor Psalms, Councilor Ingold, Councilor McGratton, Roxanne Marr, uh, Paul Mogul, Amanda Hutchison, and I think that's it. This is a small group. Uh, the, the, pur the purpose of this meeting was it's an informational to talk about trying to elicit from the community uh, concerns uh, and kind of engage in exchange of meaningful ideas regarding the health of the community and things that we do within the town services, social injustice and racial equality. Uh, that being said, wow, okay. <laughs> I was hoping to have res more residents here or some residents here to talk about some of these issues. And I'm kind of at a loss on how we want to go from here. Uh, we had an opportunity for the record. We met with the Mash and Tuckets uh, last the 24th of, I think it was the 24th of September. Uh, they, they have a diversity uh, committee. And it was, I think it's chaired by Mr. Butler, if I'm correct. And what it was is a general discussion about the, how best the, the Mashtuck and Pequot Tribal Nation and the Town of Ledger can um, work together on issues concerning uh, when was the police, when was social services, when was how town services delivered. And just to get an understanding and kind of a, uh, this, that first meeting was really just a meet and greet. Uh, we did come up with a, Kind of a memorandum of understanding relative to uh, social services that we provided to the Mash the Mash and Tucket Pequot Tribal Nation to review. Uh, at which time uh, the plan is for have have them take a look at that, see if they're in agreement. The document in question was uh, generated through the efforts of uh, the our our mayor through discussions he had previously had with uh, the Chairman Butler and the Mash and Tucket Pequot Tribal Nation. Uh, so we're trying to address some of the social services. We think we may have a good handle on it. If if it goes well, what will happen is a document will come back to us. Uh, at that point, we'll see about their group will sign off on it relative to their committee. Our committee will vote to see if we sign off on it. And then at that point, we would move it to our respective legislative bodies, us, the town of Ledger being the town council, and the tribe would be the tribal council. Uh, the, the intent is to meet again, and there was some discussion on having a uh, kind of a regular style meeting, not like every week, type every month, but something that's on a regular basis so we can keep a, a, a good handle on any issues that are that are impacting both communities that can be done, that can be addressed potentially on a lower level and then brought to the town councils or the tribal nations as uh, it would be necessary, if, it, if at all necessary. A lot of times what we all know is it's a lack of understanding that causes so many problems. And uh, the hope is through the community, community relations committee is as people get more knowledge on the processes and uh, how things work, uh, those issues of misinterpretations can be minimized and thus uh, have an mm -hmm. overall experience, an overall better experience for all parties involved. Uh, do, there is a, Wow. Okay. The, the hope here was to have a discussion with the people from the town, uh, general populace from the town on things they saw as issues. I, th I think the committee itself has talked about police services, social services, and then uh, reg re uh, overall town services mm -hmm. uh, with the idea being that we would attack, I use the word attack, excuse the expression, uh, look at the police services, uh, talk with the chief of police to potentially have him come come on and kind of give an overview of the police department, uh, their operations. Uh, having said this in the past, uh, police chief had an opportunity to sit down with the town counselors 
and talk at length about things that the police department is doing under the uh, direction of uh, Chief Rich, which really I was, and I've been in town for years and years and years. I was really in awe of the things he's doing and uh, his method of, of addressing any concerns. Uh, he definitely left uh, me with the impression that he is definitely on top of it and we're in a very good place. So I think what would be nice is to uh, schedule something with the chief to come to, to the committee, kind of give us an overview of what they do, how they operate, and uh, then we can have an open discussion with him uh, on at probably not that date, but maybe we'll have to figure out how best to do that. Would it be appropriate to have him come talk and at that time still open up as, as informational? So people who have questions or is that kind of a separate item? I know I'm kind of vaguing out here. The whole idea here is to try and uh, figure out what, the, what we need relative to the town and just look at the police department. I'm going to focus in on that real hard right now. So bear with me. What's what's the opinion? Uh, this is directed to uh, Councilor Ingalls and Councilor Psalms relative to having the police chief come to one of our committee meetings, discuss the police department, and then at a subsequent meeting or at the same meeting, have a discussion with the general populace. Because there's one part of giving the information out so people can absorb it. Give them a chance to uh, to think about it, and then come back on a, at a later time and talk more at a uh, on a kind of a more free open discussion. While while his part would be delivering a message, and then later having a group discussion with him about the message. What what is your take on that? So I would recommend this. We covered a tremendous amount of ground with the police chief when we met with him. We, you know, my group met with him, Mikey, we were together when yes. we met with the chief. Yes. We, we spent three hours with the chief and covered a tremendous amount of ground. And I left that meeting so impressed and so encouraged by what our police do. Correct. Uh, it's, however, th there was just too much content in that meeting to bring to a forum all at once. I would recommend we pick one or two topics that we think would generate, that are probably the most on people's minds um, and advertise that this is what we're going to be talking about and there will be time for Q&A. We're gonna give the police chief X number of minutes to describe what the, what, what the, um, you know, what our police do on this issue and then let the public ask their questions. That's what I would recommend. Um, and then, you know, if other issues are brought up in that forum, I would make a note of them to discuss in another forum just to keep the topic um, focused. And so we can cover it deeply instead of going a mile wide and an inch deep. Uh, so that those are my thoughts. Uh, Councilor Sam, I, I agree with Andre. Um, I think also that what we've learned tonight, or at least I have, uh, is I think we need to do some more publicity about whatever we plan to do in those meetings. I think we need to use some social media to say, hey, you know, folks, we stood up this committee. Uh, here's what we're going to talk about. Please come. Mm -hmm. um, because I, I think we know that that in general, people don't go and look at the town's website to find, find what meetings are on tonight. And we have another one during the day tomorrow for people who work, but um, I think our lesson here is we've got to, like everything else, you know, you look at the farmer's market and how they communicate. You look at how, I mean, everybody, um, but that social media is part of what we do and live and breathe today. So, so maybe we take some lessons from that and, and publicize a little more. I remember when we had the town center committee um, stood up, we had a public information session, and I think there were there were newspaper advertisements at the time. It was on the town website. I think we had a total of 11 people, and eight of them were from existing committees and boards and commissions, and there were maybe three or four interested residents. 
and that was on the subject of, you know, what are we going to do in the center of Ledger, which everybody has an opinion about what, what you want to do with with streetscapes and things like that, but nobody came. Right. So we've, we've got to use social media. Yeah, I agree. Mike, I'd also like to back up a little bit, if you don't mind, um, and explain just, you know, I know Paul is here, Amanda's here, just um, just as uh, to revisit what we discussed with the tribal leaders about the social about social services, because that was a big area of misunderstanding. So um, uh, just to update everybody, there it seems that there was a verbal agreement for years that tribal members living in Ledyard would receive social services from the tribe. Um, that was the verbal guidance given years back. Um, there was nothing in writing to my knowledge. Um, however, it, ha it has led to misunderstandings and confusion. So the memorandum of understanding is to clarify that tribal members who are residents of Ledyard, taxpayers of Ledyard, um, and actually, we're going to use the word residents. Will receive social if they're qualified for social service help, they will receive it from Ledger social services. If they are residents of the reservation, they will and they qualify. They will receive services from the tribe. So we're going to put it in writing and make it really clear so that um, everyone understands. And and really, the bottom line is. Both communities want to help their vulnerable families. Um, so we think that this is the clearest way to explain how it will work going forward. And is that a fair summary? Yes, Andre, thank you for the clarity. For, for some fine detail on that, I, I think we also said that there, there is land within the reservation and then there is land in the town of Ledyard that is not taxable. Um, so if you live on non-taxable land in the town of Ledyard, I believe that resident would get services from the tribe. Correct. Do I recall that correctly? I think so. Because you It'll had- It'll be in the MOU. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Which, we want to write it down. for the record, is not signed yet. Is not signed. It, it has been drafted. It is with the tribe now for review. So just for you know, for the record, it's it's under review. But this is the direction we're going. The intent is to clarify it so that everyone knows where they can get help when they need it. it, it the town and the tribe will be will be getting back together to discuss the MOU prior to both parties signing it. So. Uh, that being said, a, a question I would have at this point is relative to because the police, I'm going to drop back to the policing portion because the policing portion was such a hot topic. And so it's, it's a big nugget. So the question is, what do we pull out of the policing side of it? Is it the stopping someone who gets stopped for speeding, uh, the interaction? Because to have, as Councilor Ingalls so well put it, to have, uh, Chief Rich come and talk, it would be great to have a very narrow focus of discussion to kind of eat this apple, you know, one bite, small bite at a time. So I'm not sure what two topics on a given night or two two things to discuss. Uh, I know that people complained at, at the march about being stopped uh, unfairly. I, I know some people have called, uh, you know, it, it made a comment about being having been stopped, but it, you know, it's the context. There's no context when someone tells me that kind of stuff. So, the ability to have police chief uh, Rich talk about here's our procedure to when we stop people, uh, and then also, I would like to have that with something on the same during the same discussion. Two separate issues. There's a stoppage of individuals. What's their process? What's their policy? How do they do it? And then the other part is, how do they? What are what are one of the things they do as a so as a service to the to the town, such as uh, the wellness? If they're going to do a wellness, say you have a child who's autistic or 
or you may have somebody who's overly elderly. What do, what does the police department do relative to that? So it's two different. I know they're completely two different things, but it shows the two different diametrically different things that the police department does that a lot of people may not know about the other one versus, yeah, we all get stopped by the police for speeding, but you don't know about the things they do on the social side going to and protecting people with, that hasn't anything to do with stopping you know, somebody who's, who's driving. It's just a thought process. I'm just trying to figure out how best mm -hmm. to do this because uh, going back to what Councilor Engel said, the, the bite off too much on one night is going to just lose people. Bless you. So is that a, how do you, what do you guys, what do you two think of that idea? <laughs> Relative to having the police chief come talk about what's the policy, how do they perform the, the stopping of individuals when they're for mm -hmm. police work? And then the other part of that is what's the, what do you, how do you address or what does the department provide relative to a wellness check, I'd call it. I know they're completely different things, mm -hmm. and part of that's intentional. Mm -hmm. be, uh, but you know, or do we want to go talk about okay, what's what's the process for st stoppage? What are, what's the expectation from the department? Do you want to talk about uh, the training? Because he has a lot of training. There's so many. There's so right. many components. So much information that he provided during these discussions that going back to it. Council Engel said that to try and do it all in one night and have people listen and walk away and, and have their heads not spinning on all the things that the, the police department does, uh, doesn't do, do justice to the police department and their ability to provide the message, nor for the town residents who want to hear and learn about the services that are provided by the police department. I think we also want to hear from people who are attend presidents who attend about their perception of their experience with the police and give the chief an opportunity to respond to that because it's a direct it's a direct channel for people to talk to ledger police about their experience. Um, and and that's important. So mm -hmm. and I think that would be a two way conversation. Um, you know, we had that conversation about where um, um, radar traps are set and how that makes people feel. And, you know, that was an important conversation for us to hear about. And we heard yes. about it uh, when we met with the chief as counselors in our individual meetings. Um, we know that, that that's an issue. And then when we talked to the tribe, we heard about it directly from the tribe. Yes. And that's the kind of dialogue you want to have. In my yes, I agree. I totally agree with Councillor Psalms. That was actually the, the issue that was probably number one on my list um, was the, the issue of speed traps. You're right, Bill. We've heard it from residents. We've heard it from the police chief. We heard it directly from tribal members. Um, so I think that would probably be my first pick just based on the, the, the chatter around that topic. Um, you know, but I think you, I think several important topics have been raised. Uh, just it, you know, I always so there's a part of my brain that always wants to quantify things. So I wonder what Chief Rich gets the most communication on. Is there a particular issue that he gets the most email about that he would say? You know, actually, residents are asking about X, Y, Z all the time. So I think it'd be worth asking him as well but in terms of public perception i think the chatter around speed traps especially up on shoeville near the reservation i think we need to have an open discussion about that mike i loved you also mentioned how robust police training really is i had no idea no idea um and i think that would also be a really fascinating time we could probably take a whole session and just talk about that but you know maybe the thing to do is to generate a list of topics to bring to the public one at a time maybe two at a time depending on how you know how big we think it is and then just prioritize i i, I agree uh and because a big concern is the picking a topic 
and trying to do two in one night and then not doing due just justice to the secondary topic right. or whatever that may be. So I agree, Council Ingalls, uh, coming up with uh, one on policing speed traps. I want to find out from the from the police chief. What I, do, what I will do is I, re I will reach out to police chief Rich and ask him for his top five concerns or things that come into him through emails and if you'd be willing to discuss those and that way getting coming back to the the committee and saying here's the top five i think as you said counselor ingles the speed traps uh the, the stopping of people when they're in town i think that's going to be num probably number one for and i hear about a lot uh but by doing only one at a time and i think it goes to what counselor psalms was talking about it gives people a chance to listen respond back ask questions and so that two-way conversation takes place and i'd rather have one session where one item that allows two-way conversation and schedule two it may be a short session may only be a half an hour maybe 45 minutes but at least we know that the people who've shown up had a chance to not only hear what the police chief has said on the topic but has had the opportunity to ask them questions and such back to get some dialogue going Mm -hmm. so so on that subject um i know also that there's another side to that story uh i would be willing to bet that one of the top five on the police's complaint list is people complaining about speeding on chewville i know that because i've seen it on facebook yeah. multiple times yeah um i actually got past myself by a person and I called the police and said, hey, I was here. And I used to do that all the time, but I did it because I was aware of those conversations on Facebook about Chewville. And I was going five miles over the speed limit. And we all know this story. You're going five over and somebody passes you. In in that experience for me, it was like it was a routine thing. I know we're gonna come around this curve. This guy's going five over and I know if there's nothing ahead, there's a long straight, I'm gonna pass him. And it was just one fluid motion. It was like, this guy does this every single day. He gets behind somebody and he gets to this point and passes him. Next day, um, I actually talked to a resident who had been complaining about it. And the next day, that resident saw someone pulled over for speeding in that spot. It's a huge problem. Um, so, you know, there are two sides to every story. Mm -hmm. uh, we could yes. probably choose different places. I think we all agreed on that uh, for mm -hmm. police to sit. And I think they've been already given clear direction about where not to sit, but mm -hmm. they also have to do the job. And that's right. what right. residents right. expect. And, I mean, that's what everybody expects. And, and good to hear to that. I mean, according to Chairman Butler, I think he said it had been a few, it had been quite a few months since it had been an issue. Yes, he did. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but. Yeah, like let's let's keep it up. Uh, I'm curious, Mike. I don't want to step on the chairman's toes, but I am I curious know. since we have you know Amanda is a resident. I know she's probably here wearing her reporter's cap, um, but we do have Paul and Amanda here, and I, I am curious to know if they had questions. Me too. Yeah, no, I'm I'm here in reporter hat capacity, but. Kind of like what Mike said earlier, I'm really surprised that there's like no one here. Like I anticipated that, you know, attendance might be smaller at tomorrow morning session because it's, you know, in the middle of the morning, whatever people might be at work. But I'm honestly kind of surprised that like no one's here. Paul. I'm uh, here uh, just to see what this is all about. I saw the community Re Re relations committee information and. So you got to come and listen to see what uh, what your point of view is and where you're coming from and what issues you're looking at uh, addressing. So I'm I'm really uh, information gathering here at this evening. Thanks, Thank Paul. You. Thanks, you're Paul. welcome. Mike. Yes, Mike? yes, yes, Councillor McGratton. Okay. Um, I also came to listen to what people, <laughs> residents, had to say. Um, but you are the liaison <clears throat> from this committee to the similar committee on the Board of Education. I'm not sure what it's called. How are they doing and, and what's going on with that committee? We, we've met once so far. 
and okay. and uh, I'd sit on it with with uh, Crystal Whipple, and okay. we we have not it's, we have not heard hide or hair since then. I've not had any communication from them. I don't know where their their meetings typically, unfortunately, happen to coincide with town council meetings. Okay. Uh, okay. So that's problematic in one aspect, uh, only because to go. Sure, sure. But you haven't heard what they are doing. No, I have not. Okay. I have not. Okay. Yeah, I'll I'll reach out to Anthony uh, Farvey to see what's going on, uh, mm -hmm. Chairman of the ch Chairperson of the Board, school, school right. board to see where we're at. I know there's a lot of things going on. I'm not sure they've got a they've got a big mess going on right now with the COVID, trying to deal with the school stuff. Sure, and, uh, sure. Things. So this may be on their back burner for the moment, but it okay. should still be somewhere. Uh, and they were do they had a list of things they were going to be working on trying to pull together. Because when we had the meeting that I went to, there was a lot of robo robust, ro robust conversation on uh, trying to have discussions with, with particularly getting the students together and, and small groups of students having small groups and trying to get the students to pull information together so that they wouldn't have the, I won't say the pressure of adults lingering over their heads, but mm -hmm. a, a better flow of information potentially by doing it with a peer on peer. So I'll ask to see how that's going. I got my two boys downstairs. I question them every day, and uh, but they but school is a completely different animal right now for all of them. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So so right now what I have is uh, getting a hold of Police Chief Rich, uh, finding out his top five uh, issues. Uh, I think top of that list would be probably speed trap. I I don't want to use the word speed traps. Speed enforcement, uh, particularly around Shoeville, uh, and just seeing about him coming, getting that list together. I'm not sure. Do we want to wait? Do you, can I? This is going to be to Roxanne. Roxanne, if I send you his top five, I know we have we have our next meeting is in two weeks. Uh, so seeing, we'll, the next meeting, see about scheduling, scheduling him at that point from the at the committee level, I'm trying to see how best to make this happen. Because we have to come up with what the five issues are that he's going to have, then at that point we all we come we come into agreement on what those five will be, and then we turn around and have schedule him to come in and talk about those uh, those topics either one one at a time based on what we think is best, and at that point provides the ability to go out to out on social media and stop saying hey we're going to have these conversations and just kind of put the word out there and see if we can garner people coming in uh to one of our meetings to talk about it here please chief rich and uh give their feedback after the, during that discussion time does that seem reasonable yes yeah, yeah we can do that okay yeah mr chair yes like, um, yes um i i'd be willing to volunteer if the committee is in agreement i would post an event on facebook and <laughs> With an event, you know, people will say interested or going, and we'd at least get some sense of who might show up. And typically people say they're going and then they don't. But still, if you had 10 people said they're going, we'd probably end up with two or three who would actually be there. And I'd be willing to post that event and try and get it shared. That that would be great. Uh, I think okay. we're probably, I'm just trying to figure out, knowing not knowing Chief Rich's schedule, not knowing the five topics we're going to be figuring coming coming to the next meeting we have. I know this is slow, but it's it, but it's somewhat methodical. Get the information from Police Chief Rich for the next meeting we have. Sit down, go through the listing, so they're all in agreement on what they are. At that point, as we can pick a topic, we could go at we can then move forward, uh, Councilor Psalms, with the idea of putting it out there for social media, posting something. Trying to get the word out that we're going to have a meeting with the chief rich so that everybody can come to and hear him talk about a particular topic uh, while he's providing services to the town and people can uh, ask questions and have an open dialogue at that point. Does that sound reasonable? Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Uh, Bill, I would just suggest as a courtesy to run it by the council chair, but I, I think it's a great idea to get it out there and promote it. She was the first one I was going to call. Just awesome. to see how she would do it, being, being the uh, 
the marketing genius that she is, she would have some suggestions for me on, on what to post, how to post. I mean, well, honestly, hold on, Amanda. <laughs> so there, there's, you know, one thought that I've had is um, to use Facebook, not the resource page, not, you know, not what we used to know as the forum, now the resource. I think, you know, perhaps the mayor's page or if there's a town of Ledyard page to regularly, um, daily, put out to the community what meetings are going on today. Here's the agenda, here are the minutes. Did you know about bulk pickup? Did you know the farmer's market today? Uh, here's a link to Park and Rec. Daily, daily, daily drip feeding information about town services, who are the contact people, what does each department do? Um, and and a, a certainly include town meetings and especially meetings of particular interest, like I suspected this one would be. Um, and maybe if we had actually advertised it more deliberately and not, um, you know, it's a public meeting, obviously the information's out there for, for those who wanna go find it. But um, anyway, it's just a thought that I've had Excuse me. Somebody wants to join us. I, I like I like the idea. The only the only issue I, I I see is that if they won't go to the town website now, they're not. That's not where they're going to go for their information. So, like I'm thinking about the Ledger Community Resources page that uh, that was put, that was created at the beginning of of uh, the Black Lives Matter movement. Going on there and saying, hey, you know, FYI, here's what's, here's what's going to go. I don't know if that's where you're planning on go, planning on going, Bill. I, I was thinking of going to Ledger Events and the Ledger Town Facebook page, create an event, or ask Regina to create an event, and then share it on my own web page. That was what I was thinking of doing. No, and then if each of us did the same, yep. that'll get it more publicity. Yep, and, I'll, and I would go and make a comment on the Ledger, uh, that resource page, uh, just the more places that it pops up, the more people who see it and you know, getting people to come in and and just participate on the discussion is is really the goal at this point. Yeah. Okay, so I, I just just a thought, Mr. Chair, if, if um if we've been here over a half hour, I, I'm not thinking we're gonna see any newcomers. So Perhaps see you tomorrow. <laughs> <That's about laughs> Thank you, Bill. We've had enough. <laughs> no, I was I was gonna I was gonna uh, make uh, make make a mo make a motion to adjourn based on the fact I don't think there's any more we can discuss here, and that we've got our I've got my marching orders that I need to do and take care of and to present for the next meeting that we're going to have two weeks from now. To generate that list. So, without exception, I'd like to I like to adjourn. Okay. I, I, before we go, I'm just I want you both to know I'm going to be on my iPhone tomorrow because I'll be in Farmington. So I'll join just by phone. I I will probably <laughs> join by phone also because I'm going to be up in near Putnam. <laughs> okay. Well, geez, maybe I'll join by my phone. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got <laughs> I can probably you probably will see my face because I can still pull it up on my on my phone that way. So, that being said, okay. good night. Now seven oh six. We are adjourned. Thank you. Right. Good night. Thank, Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.